Welcome back. Those were the main headlines and more details. President Abdel Fattah Sisi arrived in Uzbekistan on Tuesday, the third and final leg of his Asian tour, which included stops in Bahrain and China. During his first visit to Tashkent, uh, President uh, Sisi is expected to meet with Uzbek President uh, Shavkat uh, Mirziyoyev, as well as a number of ministers and senior officials to discuss ways of to push forward bilateral ties in various domains. The two leaders are expected to witness a number of agreements and memos of understanding on joint mutual cooperation in many fields. Earlier in China, the head of state addressed the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC, saying that in the coming years, Egypt would continue to develop cooperation platforms to serve the interests of African and developing countries. More details in this report. President Abdel Fattah Sisi concluded on Tuesday his visit to China heading to Uzbekistan, the third stop of his Asian tour. Before leaving Beijing, President Abdel Fattah Sisi took part on Tuesday in the closed meetings of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation held on the final day of the event. Presidential spokesperson Ambassador Bassem Rodi said President Sisi was the first speaker in the session. In his speech, President Sisi reviewed Egypt's vision for activating Chinese-African cooperation and for enhancing partnership between the two sides. The president also reviewed the role that Egypt can play in this regard. Sisi said that in the coming years, Egypt will continue to develop cooperation platforms to serve the interests of African and developing countries. The president also presented the Suez Canal Economic Zone as an international logistics and economic hub that can contribute in developing the international maritime transport, enhancing world free trade and opening new investment opportunities. He also said that integration of various development initiatives such as Africa's modernization agenda of 2063 is of great importance. The two-day forum discussed means of boosting economic cooperation between China and Africa, in addition to the Road and Belt Initiative. The Chinese president pledged $60 billion in funding for development in Africa. Earlier, President Sisi participated in the second roundtable meeting that was held by the leaders taking part in the forum. The meeting aimed at opening new communication channels between investors and businessmen on both sides. It also tackled means of attracting foreign investments to Africa. The leaders focused on infrastructure projects and providing funds for public and private sectors to boost these projects. More than 52 African leaders attended the two-day forum. President Abdel Fattah Hassisi participated in 2018 Beijing summit of the Forum on China-African Cooperation, FOCAC, held on the 3rd and 4th of September. During his visit to China, which started on Saturday, the president held summit talks with Chinese president and a number of African leaders. More on the presidential activities during his visit in this report. President Abdel Fattah Sisi participated in the 2018 Beijing Summit of the Forum in China-African Cooperation, FOCAC, held on the 3rd and 4th of September. President Abdel Fattah Sisi started the four-day official visit to Beijing on Saturday, where he was welcomed by his Chinese counterpart with a formal reception, as well as an official super banquet, which was held on the President Sisi's honor. President Sisi held summit talks with the Chinese President Xi Jinping and a number of Chinese high-ranking officials. Sisi and Jinping signed several agreements and memoranda of understanding in various fields. The head of state welcomed upgrading mutual ties with China to the level of comprehensive strategic partnership. For his part, Jinping stressed his full support to Egypt in its battle fighting terrorism and restoring regional stability in the Middle East. And he also hailed the country's successful economic program. During his visit, President Sisi also held talks with the Chinese Prime Minister Li Qijiang and laid the breath on the memorial of the people's heroes in Beijing. The president also visited the Communist Party Academy, one of the most important educational institutions in China. President Sisi inspected the museum of the academy, which was built in 1933 and exhibits the historical phases of the academy's development and its role. Sisi held talks with the head of the academy and senior officials. The head of the state said Egypt plays a pivotal role in international trade with its location and trade agreements with many countries, it is a vital route for international markets. He also added that Egypt has attracted foreign investment by facilitating the establishment of the investment projects in the country and by founding infrastructure and developing harbors. 
On the sidelines of his visit, the CC witnessed the signing of a number of cooperation agreements with the Dutch Chinese companies for implementing projects in Egypt. The agreements are worth $18.3 billion of investments and include the establishment of a power station in um, Hamarin using the clean coal technology, which is expected to be the biggest in the world. The agreements were signed at the end of the president's meeting uh, with heads of the Chinese companies investing in Egypt. During the meeting, President Sisi reviewed the economic developments Egypt has witnessed over the past few years. On the sidelines of his visit to China, President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with a number of African leaders attending the Forum on China. African Cooperation for CAC details in this report. On the sidelines of his visit to China, President Abdel Fattah Sisi held a number of meetings with African leaders attending the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. President El Sisi met with his Sudanese counterpart Omar al-Bashir, where both leaders appraised the strength of historic Egyptian-Sudanese ties. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassem Rodi said that President El Sisi stressed on Egypt's keenness on continuously holding talks and consultations with the Sudanese side to further enhance bilateral cooperation for the welfare of the peoples of both countries. The Egyptian Sudanese meeting also tackled means of bolstering bilateral ties in all fields as well as supporting economic and trade relations in order to achieve comprehensive economic and developmental renaissance between both countries. President El Sisi received Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed at his residential headquarters in Beijing. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Radi said that President El Sisi welcomed the Ethiopian Prime Minister and hailed the keenness of the two sides to boost their bilateral relations. For his part, the Ethiopian Prime Minister expressed his keenness to meet with President El Sisi in order to continue consultations over means of boosting bilateral cooperation. Radi added that the meeting tackled a number of issues of mutual concern. He said that the two leaders expressed keenness to reach an agreement regarding Ethiopia's Renaissance Dam. President El Sisi also met with his Somalese counterpart, Mohammed Abdullah Farmago. During the meeting, President El Sisi stressed that Egypt honors its historic ties with Somalia and is keen on the interests and welfare of the Somali people within the framework of the United Stable and Strong Nation. President El Sisi reiterated that Egypt supports Somalia in facing all the challenges that face the nation topped by its fight against terrorism and extremism, adding that Egypt is willing to continuously support Somalia to reestablish and stabilize state institutions. President El Sisi also asserted that Egypt is keen on enhancing bilateral cooperation with Somalia, especially in the fields of economy, trade, and the training of Somali technical cadres. For his part, Somalia was stressed that the nation is keen on further boosting its cooperation with Egypt in all domains. The Somali president praised the historic role played by Egypt in supporting and providing aid to Somalia. The talks also tackled means of boosting bilateral ties and the recent domestic developments in Somalia. Earlier, President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with South Sudanese President Silva Kiir at his residential headquarters in Beijing. Presidential spokesman Bassam Radi said that during the meeting, President El Sisi said that Egypt is keen on developing cooperation between the two countries, offering aid and technical support to the African country. During the meeting, El Sisi also asserted Egypt's keenness on supporting the South Sudan's government and people to achieve a peaceful political settlement. President El Sisi congratulated President Kiir on signing the final peace agreement. He also confirmed Egypt's support for the National Dialogue Initiative concerning resolving the conflict and achieving national settlement. During this week, the president made a three-country trip that uh, took him to Bahrain, followed by China, to attend the FOCAC Forum, and finally to Uzbekistan. Here is the president's activities in a week. After receiving an official reception from his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, President Abdel Fattah Sisi welcomed the huge development of mutual relations with Beijing to reach comprehensive strategic partnership. 
President Assisi held summit talks with his Chinese president as the head of state started a four-day official visit to China, in which he is due to participate in the Fukuk summit along with a number of African leaders. President Abdel Fattah Sisi continues his visit to China, where he held talks with Prime Minister Li Qiyang and laid a wreath of flowers on the tomb of the people's heroes in Beijing. Upon an invitation from Chinese President Xi Jinping, Al-Sisi started a four-day official visit to Beijing Sunday, where he was welcomed by his Chinese counterpart with a formal reception as well as an official super banquet, which was held on the President Assisi's honor. President Assisi held summit talks with the Chinese President Jinping and a number of senior officials. Assisi and Jinping signed several agreements and memoranda of understanding in various fields. President Abdel Fattah Sisi visited the Communist Party Academy, one of the most important educational institutions in China. President Assisi inspected the Museum of the Academy, which was built in 1933 and exhibits the historical phases of the Academy's development and its role. Assisi held talks with the head of the Academy and senior officials. The head of state said Egypt plays a pivotal role in international trade and with its location and trade agreements with many countries, it is vital route for international markets. He added that Egypt has attracted foreign investment by facilitating the establishment of investment projects in the country and by founding infrastructure and developing harbors. On the sidelines of his visit to China, President Abdel Fattah Sisi met on Sunday with his Sudanese counterpart Omar al-Bashir, where both leaders praised the strength of the historic Egyptian-Sudanese ties. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Radi said that President Assisi stressed on Egypt's keenness on continuously holding talks and consultations with the Sudanese side to further enhance bilateral cooperation for the welfare of the people of both countries. President Assisi met with his Somali counterpart Mohamed Abdallah Farmago. During the meeting, President Assisi stressed that Egypt appreciates its historic ties with Somalia and is keen on the interests and welfare of the Somali people within the framework of a united, stable and strong nation. Also on Sunday, President Assisi received Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abe Ahmed at his residential headquarters in Beijing. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Radi said that President Assisi welcomed the Ethiopian Prime Minister and hailed the keenness of the two sides to boost their bilateral relations. The President also stressed Egypt's keenness to boost its joint cooperation with Ethiopia in a way that serves the interests of the two African countries. Security forces in the Simon Bolivar Square arrested 24-year-old Abdullah Ayman Abdul Samia as a bag he was carrying caught fire. Security sources uh, said that the bag contained a plastic bottle with inflammable chemicals. Initial examination showed that the man adopts extremist thoughts. The attacker was not injured and no casualties or damage were caused in the area. A statement said that legal procedures are underway to refer the attacker to the prosecution. The UN mission in Libya said a ceasefire agreement was reached on Tuesday to end a week of clashes in the capital Tripoli that have killed at least 50 people. Details. The UNSMIL mission said on Tuesday that under the auspices of the UN envoy Ghassan Salama, a ceasefire agreement was reached and signed today to end all hostilities, protect civilians, safeguard public and private property. It added that the agreement today does not aim to fix all Libyan capital security problems. It seeks to agree on a broader framework on the way to start addressing these issues. After another day of violent clashes in the capital's southern suburbs, the fighting came to a pause in the early evening but it was unclear if all groups involved would respect the agreement. Last week, a ceasefire deal announced by officials from western cities only held for a few hours, according to Libyan Health Ministry. Fighting in and around Tripoli since August 27 has killed at least 50 people and wounded 138 others, most of them civilians. The violence has also forced thousands of people to flee to nearby towns or seek shelter in other districts of the capital, while many more have remained trapped inside their homes. 
UN SMIL said that on Twitter that ceasefire agreement also provides the reopening of Mitiga Airport, the capital's only functioning airport that has been closed since August 31 due to the clashes. The UN mission said among those who took part in the closed-door talks were military officers and leaders of various armed groups present in and around the capital. Earlier, the foreign ministry expressed concern over the latest developments in Libya, describing the armed confrontations in Tripoli and the surrounding suburbs as negative and dangerous. In its statement, the foreign ministry said that there is a need to re-establish stability in Libya and for state institutions, especially the military and security bodies, to undertake their responsibilities. The statement said that the militia chaos scenario should be avoided so that the Libyan people can attain their wealth and build a modern state. Libya announced on Tuesday that fighting in and around its capital had displaced thousands of people as the UN prepared to host talks seeking to halt the violence. Clashes since August 27th between rival militias in and around Tripoli have killed at least 50 people and wounded 138 others, most of them civilians. The fighting has raged mostly in the southern suburbs of the capital, forcing 1,825 families to flee to nearby towns or seek shelter in other districts of Tripoli. The Kremlin announced on Tuesday that the Syrian army was getting ready to solve the problem of terrorism in the northwestern province of Idlib. Russian President Vladimir Putin's spokesman said that numerous terrorists are holed up in the country's last rebel stronghold, leading to a general destabilization of the situation. Russian warplanes battered Syria's rebel-controlled Idlib for the first time in three weeks as expectations mount of a government offensive on the rebel stronghold. Meanwhile, the U.S. envoy for Syria was in Ankara to discuss the latest developments in the war-torn country with Turkish officials as an offensive against rebel-held Idlib appeared imminent. The presidents of Turkey, Russia and Iran will meet in Tehran on Friday for a tripartite summit likely to focus on Idlib. Also on Tuesday, the United States said that the UN Security Council will meet Friday to address the situation in Syria's Idlib. U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley said that the United States, currently holding the presidency of the Security Council, is calling the meeting to discuss the possibility that Syrian forces with Russian support will deploy chemical weapons against the rebels and civilians in the area. Six people were killed and 20 others wounded on Tuesday in the southern city, Iraqi city of Basra, in ongoing unrest as protesters rally against economic woes at the dire state of public services. Head of the government's Human Rights Council in Basra province said security forces directly opened fire on protesters. Medical sources said that around 15 members of the security forces were injured in the clashes. Thousands of people rallied outside the local government headquarters in Basra. During the protest, some people People in the crowd uh, uh, hurled Molotov cocktails and fireworks at the government building while securing forces responded with tear gas and by firing shots into the air. Earlier on Tuesday, Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abedi said an investigation had been launched into the death of another protester the day before. Addressing his weekly press conference in the capital Baghdad, al-Abedi reasserted he had ordered no real bullets are to be fired in the decision of protesters or in the air. Meanwhile, police and military cordons had been put in place blocking numerous roads.